How do we know that we're hearing God's voice when we pray? Well, I have a story from last week to tell you that can uh, encourage you to keep praying and learn if it's God speaking to you or not. So I work from home and I'm by myself most of the day. And one of the great benefits is I can pretty much pray all day long no matter what. Now I was doing that before when I was working outside the home, but now it's very quiet. And so I uh, love my house in the woods. I like to take walks with my dog. Uh, I'm really enjoying them this week because the sun is out and it's melting the snow. And I will go on walks and pray and hear God responding to me through prayer. So last Thursday, um, my husband and I went to bed. We're both early risers, so we go to bed around nine-ish. And our daughter came upstairs in just distress and she said the cat was injured. We have an outdoor cat. She's been with us about five years. She was just a stray who wandered up to us and she loves her life as an outdoor kitty because she can catch as many mice as she wants. Well, with this deep freeze that we've had in the US, she was trying to run in the, to the garage to stay warm. This is uh, something she does quite often. But sadly, what happened is she darted in at the very, very last second and the sensors on the garage door didn't see her in time. And so her head was caught under the garage. Now, I'm not going to leave you on a cliffhanger. She's okay, but we'll get to that part in a minute. Now, of course, we didn't know that that night. She was just crying out this distress call. So uh, we got her out. We... Um, I kind of looked at her and she was walking really spastically. So I was afraid to touch her because I thought she probably had some internal injuries. But uh, I wanted to take her to the vet just as soon as I could, which would be the next day. So um, that night I went back to bed, of course, all uh, messed up, right? And um, my schedule of thinking disrupted in my sleep and then you have this crisis to deal with and trying to calm back calm back down and get back to sleep and I was praying I was praying for our cat while I'm trying to fall asleep and I thought in my in my mental state that I was in I thought God was telling me that she was going to pass and that it was going to be her last night and in the morning that I'd wake up and she would be peacefully gone, okay? So that was sad, but I guess I was preparing myself for that reality because, I mean, that is what happens when animals get injured, you know? So I get up the next morning fully expecting to go into the garage and see a site I really didn't want to see and... As soon as I looked into that box, uh, I heard a meow, you know, and she was alive. And I was really surprised because I thought that God had told me she was going to die, but she, she hadn't. And um, then just to fast forward to this and we'll get back to the prayer part. I took her to the vet and the vet said that she had a brain injury, that she really had no broken bones. There was no reason for an x-ray, that she had like a, a brain injury. And so that's why her movements were so spastic. And he said she should make an almost full recovery. So she's kind of in a little hospital in the garage in a kennel by herself. And she's making some improvements every day. And I'm very happy about that. So... It got me thinking, though, after that happened. You know, I've heard all these things from God before. Why did I get that wrong? You know, why why did I get that so wrong? It's kind of an important thing, really. And I remembered a sermon that uh, one of my pastors had preached uh, earlier this year, and he talked about him getting it wrong one time. And he was talking about a coffee shop, and he felt that God was telling him to go to that specific coffee shop that morning. He doesn't usually go there. And he was all jazzed because that's his favorite coffee to have. But he thought it's because God um, wanted him to speak to someone there, like speak a word of encouragement or blessing to them. And he gets there and they're closed. <laughs> 
So he obviously got it wrong. And he said, you know, sometimes we're going to get it wrong. And he's like, that doesn't mean that we should stop praying. Because for a lot of us, that's going to feel discouraging. It's going to feel like um, maybe we, we're just getting the whole prayer thing wrong. And we should just give up trying. So in preparation for this video today, I um, grabbed one of these books off of my shelf. This is one of my favorite ones on prayer, and it's by Philip Yancey, Prayer Does It Make Any Difference? It is a very honest and very smart but humble book on prayer. It's one of my favorites, and I highly recommend it to you. I just wanted to read you one sentence out of this book, and he says... Um, he says, the only fatal mistake is to stop praying and not begin again. So I just want to repeat that real quick. The only fatal mistake is to stop praying and not begin again. So the Bible tells us uh, to be faithful in prayer. That's uh, one of the directives in a list of um Christian living things that Paul gives us in Romans 12, be faithful in prayer. And I think it's just like anything else, that the more that we pray, the more natural it feels, the easier it gets, and the more that we'll be able to recognize God's still small voice when he speaks to us. So in the last, um, it's going on four years since I've worked from home just all by myself. I hear from God just about every day. And I'll tell you some things that are consistent in that. One is, when God speaks to me through prayer, it is always consistent with his word. Always. He's never going to contradict something that's in his word. Um, another thing is, it's always um, for my good or for someone else's good. I've never um, experienced anything that he's ever told me that isn't meant for my personal growth or for me to bless somebody else with. And then another thing I'll say about uh, recognizing whether it's God's voice or not is, uh, like I said, the more often that you do it, the more you're going to recognize it. And God's voice is very quiet and still. It's, he wants us to hear it most of the time uh, when we're alone and focused on him and spending that one-on-one -on -one time with him. Now, I do hear God speaking to me through the Holy Spirit sometimes when I'm with other people, but the majority of the time, I would say 90% of the time, I hear God speaking to me when I'm alone with him. And I think that's probably true of most Christians, that we experience and hear God's voice when we're alone with him. And when I say hearing God's voice, it's not an audible sound. It's kind of like an impression in my spirit that feels um, realer than real. That's one way that I put it. It's very hard to put into words but I know it's him. I know it's him because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. So if you're following God, you're seeking him, you're in his word, you're praying regularly, you're going to hear his voice. And I will say that sometimes God tells you things you don't really want to hear. Um, I've told a story in my book, Transforming Your Thought Life, when I was fasting and I thought I was fasting over my husband's job. But God clearly told me that I need to put all my trust that I had in my house in him. I thought that was a completely separate issue. And then God shut the door for the day. That was all we were going to talk about. So he was confronting an idol that I had in my heart at the time, my house that I'm sitting in now. And that was about 10 years ago. So he was wanting me to... Um, to take that uh, love that I had for my house and put it toward him. So sometimes he's going to tell you things that you don't really want to hear, but are for your good. Like I said, he's always doing it for your good or for someone else's good. Now, why do I think this happened? This, um, this 
issue I had with my cat and the prayer. Uh, I have looked over the last week, week and a half at some other events happening in my life. And I think it could have been uh, spiritual warfare. It could have been Satan trying to get me off track. Um, it, and I'm going to say this as an and or, it could have been God testing me. You know, am I going to keep praying? Am I going to keep um, seeking him and not doubt and not get down on myself and just pick back up and keep moving forward? Or am I going to dwell on this and think, oh, I'm, I'm doing something wrong? You know, so it could be both of those things at the same time. Satan trying to get me off track, God testing me to help me to stay faithful in prayer, even though I got that one wrong, you know. Um, and I think really the bottom line is my cat recovered. <laughs> you know, that's what matters the most. It's not whether my prayer was right or not. It's that I prayed for my cat. I cared about whether my cat got well or not and God graciously answered that prayer for me you know so when I look at it from that perspective I don't really see it as a loss I see it as a gain quite honestly so I just thought that this would encourage you because we're in the season of Lent Lent is a time when people tend to be more prayerful they're more um, focused on building up their spiritual reserves. And maybe you're running into this, that you don't know whether you're hearing God. You don't know whether he's listening to you. And I hope that my story today has encouraged you, knowing that he does listen. He might not answer in the way that you expect, but he does care. And he's always going to give you an answer for your good, even if it's a no, even if it's a wait instead of a yes. And it might take a long, long time of faithful prayer to arrive at any of those answers. So I think the, the bottom line is, and Philip Yancey makes this point in his book, is to just be consistent in prayer because the more often you show up, the more likely you are going to hear God speaking to you and encouraging you in your prayers. So I have collected all of my posts on prayer on a new page on my blog and I'd like you to check it out because it can help you take a deep dive into this subject. So I've linked that in the comments below on this video. If you liked this video, if you enjoyed it, will you please hit the like button below and think about sharing it with someone that would appreciate it too. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm praying God's peace and blessings on you. Bye-bye.